to the glad. I really like this venue because we've got the cash machines here, so feel free to tip me. Um, so this is me. I'm human. I'm one of the trainers at Install. This is Install. If you're a bash, you probably know who we are. This is my dog. You probably don't know who she is. There we go. Well, what I'm going to do is talk about Colin. Not this Colin. This is the island that the language is named after. I'm going to talk about the Colin. So, who here writes code for the JVM, either server or Android? Hands up and, and keep them up. Who writes it in Kotlin? I thought there'd be more. Okay. So that's why uh, this language has been about for uh, a bit. Okay. So although it did go to version one to 2016, it has been about for a while. Um, uh, primarily, it was started off targeting. The, the JVM because that's what uh, Jeffrey's, the creators of the language, were, were, were writing it for. Um, and on the JVM, it makes your life so much easier. I think um, there's there's a lot of momentum about the language in 2018. Um, uh, you know, it was a first class language for Android 2017, 2018, so I hope people adopted it. I actually thought there'd be more people in the room here adopting it. Um, but definitely, I think 2019 is going to see that community grow uh, even more. Okay? Now, we're a little bit biased, we're a little bit obsessed with the language. Um, if we're doing Android development, if we're doing server development, and we have we have control of that, it's not for a client, then um, we'll use Kotlin. Okay, we're even on the top of it here. We really believe in, in the language. So we attended uh, Kotlin uh, last year in October in Amsterdam, which was pretty cool because we had a little booth there, which you can see, and everybody sat in it. Uh, it was in the old stock exchange, so it was really, really sort of funky setting. Um, but one of the things we did add was we ran a, a workshop. Okay, so we did a, a full day workshop the day before the, the main conference, and we were doing uh, full stack uh, column development here, showing people how to write React apps and how to write uh, column for the server. Um, so, why would you choose um, a, a column for writing your code? On the JVM, for me, um, it's a no brainer. Okay, um, having written Lots and lots and lots of C sharp, and I, I learned Java first and I learned Java first. But having used C sharp for quite a number of years, I really was glad to see Kotlin on the JVM. Um, you know, if, you, if you're on the JVM, really, really think about you know on the Java virtual machine, really, really think about not writing Java if you can get away with it. Okay? Um, why not? Why do I not like Java? Why do I bash Java any chance that I get? Um, mainly because it's verbose, okay? It's, it's quite hard to solve problems that are much easier in other languages. Once you've used other languages and you've seen this is quite easy, when you come back to it, it's, it can be a little bit frustrating, okay? Um, there's lots of other things we can pull from functional languages. And a lot of our sort of mainstream languages are stealing those ideas in Java. Java is just a little bit slow uh, to adopt those, okay? Um, so I would say that Kotlin is a much, much better alternative if you're writing the JVM. It's, it's a real no-brainer, okay? Um, what kinds of things do you have with it, okay? You've got null safety, so you can define types that can't be null, which removes a whole class of errors. You've got lovely string templates, default parameters, extension methods, which are awesome. They allow you to write really, really clear expressive code um, and have your code well separated. Um, free functions, so you don't have to stick in pure old, uh, old one. Co-routines are superb. Uh, we have these in a lot of languages now, um, F sharp and uh, C sharp and these sorts of languages. Kotlin has a really, really good solution for, for writing co-routines and, and loads of all, loads of others, including type inference, which you know uh, languages like Java got eventually. But who's on Java 8? Anybody in Java 9? Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> you know we have some of these features in the later versions of um, Kotlin has all of these because it's a young language, it can make really clean design decisions. Um, you know, you have a couple of people driving and sometimes you need a benevolent dictator who will just push forward good design decisions. Java, some of the downsides was the committee attitude uh, that was just slow to get features in. Okay? So there's lots and lots and lots of like, okay? But Java is a pretty important language, so I hear. Um, so we can't throw away all that code. We don't want to throw away all those libraries, all that community work, all our legacy systems. So the interop solution with Kotlin is really, really good. It's very, very easy to call it the Java code from Kotlin. It's very easy to use Kotlin code 
uh, from jobs. So in the JVM, it, it's really, really a uh, no-brainer. Couple of examples of just this. Um, this is from another talk that I did. So if we're writing a class in Java, and um, sorry if you can't see over here, if we're writing a class in Java, what do we do? We define uh, our, our fields, and then we're going to have a constructor because we want to initialize those fields, and we're being good programmers, so we keep our fields private. And then, of course, we need getters and setters, but we need getters and setters for all our fields, and now our code is loaded. Okay? If we look at this in Kotlin, that's it. Okay? So really, really succinct. And, and the, Kotlin's not the only language that's doing this. JetBrains write IDEs for lots and lots of different languages, which means they can you know, borrow um, the best ideas from all of the languages that they're working with. Okay? So this is super succinct. It's actually doing more for us, because there's some other functionality uh, in our data classes. In Kotlin, we've got our equals methods and our hash codes. So there's a lot more code. And all of this is, you know, who, who auto-generates this code? Yeah, but it's still just noise. And then we refactor it, and chain sets and your version control. All of this is just noise. This is much easier. There's a lot more code going on here. Okay? Uh, no safety I mentioned. So Tony Moore said that this was his billion dollar uh, mistake, introducing nulls and the amount of uh, issues and bugs that have been introduced because of this. And if we can get rid of those in the language, if we can have our type systems, again, we talked about type systems a lot tonight. If we have type systems which we can say, this, uh, this variable or this type can never be null, it removes a whole class of errors. And it removes a whole suite of code that you have to write, and null tests that you have to write. So the column here is much, much neater because it doesn't, it doesn't compile, if it, if, if it, can, uh, it doesn't uh, support null in this block of code. Okay? The compiler, unfortunately, we want to push as much as you can into the compiler so we can do the run Okay, all other things, all other things with functional uh, capabilities, this sort of fluent API uh, that we have pretty much in any language now. Uh, we will write code roughly like this. He is writing the data in Java because it didn't have verified generics um, and it doesn't support primitives on the generics. The code can be a little bit clunky. Some parts of this are really nice um, because Java is a bit like the party. Some aspects of their stream API is really nice. Um, but it's just a little bit of a little bit of a common, much neater. Okay? Uh, we've got implicit uh, inputs to our labels here, uh, very succinct syntax, um, and single functions for all of our types, things like that. Just, it just makes less code. Okay? But the, the, the learning curve for this, um, you know, not to plug Kotlin more than, than Haskell or Go, the learning curve for this, if you know Java, is, is very small. You'll be able to learn this very well. Not a big leap. It's just everything that you're doing today easier. Okay, there's a few things that are maybe a little bit different, but most of it is just, hey, that's a really neat way. I wish you could do that in Java. Okay. Anybody use Lombok in Java? Yeah, you like it? Yeah. Oh, well, this is built into the language. This, this, that sort of succinctness is you get it out of the box. Okay, so um, like here, the reason why I decided to do this talk was basically just an excuse to go off and play with something. Um, so what I wanted to look at was Kotlin native. So what Jet, uh, what JetBrains have done is they started out on a uh, server. They were that's what they're writing desktop apps and, and, and server code. Um, then moving on to things like Android, but now they're trying to steal everything. They're trying to like cover everything. So we can write uh, Kotlin code that can be transpiled into JavaScript and run the browser. And they've also now got um, Kotlin that we can run as native. Okay? So without the JVM, same source code, compiling down to an architecture, um, and the theory being that we can um, write code uh, that can support any one of these platforms, and have as much reusable code across these platforms as possible. So how does it work? The way that it works is that they're using the uh, LV, uh, LLVM uh, backend, so this will take an intermediate representation similar to bytecode with Java, um, so they're compiling the Kotlin to this, and then the LLVM, LLVM uh, compiles that down to a uh, native binary. Okay? Um, so the source code is portable, you can compile it for JVM, you can compile it for uh, a native or browser, but the binary when you do it for native is not portable. It's for a particular architecture, for a particular machine. Okay? And they support quite a lot. Okay? The main reason for doing this really is so that you can write mobile apps and you can target uh, 
Android and iOS. You can play and interrupt with Objective-C or Swift libraries, and you can build iOS apps. Okay? Uh, I'm going to do something crazy and try to get it to work on Windows, which is just for anything trying to get anything to work on Windows. It's probably a bit crazy. Um, and the thing to sort of be aware of here is that common native uh, is in beta. So parts of this were more cumbersome than I, than I would have liked. Um, but it's still sort of quite a nice little interesting project. So what I wanted to do was, I, was, I, I did a lot of C++ uh, back in the day, um, and I wanted to take something that was um, requiring a few CPU cycles. So I thought I'd do uh, image convolution. Who's familiar with image convolution? Kernel convolution over an image. So, um, bum, 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 bum. so it's basically taking uh, a matrix and then you calculate each pixel by operating that uh, matrix over the original image. So we can do things you know, like blurring and, and uh, text detection and uh, things like that. Okay? Uh, and I'm super, super lazy, so I went to uh, reset the code and I found a common implementation for doing this. Um, then I tried to get that to work on native and along the way butchered the code, uh, ripped out anything that was using uh, a library so that I could just work with raw binary, um, and then uh, I ended up with some code. So, what I have here, and I'm going to try to do some live stuff here, and um, what I have here is um, a, a multi-platform project. Okay? So, um, what we have is a, a Gradle-built project, but it's supporting multiple platforms. Okay? And it doesn't take much in the Gradle build to set this up. Um, I've got a multi-platform uh, switch here, and then in this targets, I can just have a list of things that I'm going to target. Okay? So I'm targeting JVM and uh, a native binary with MinGLU. Okay? And then what we have over here, and, and download the configuration file, we have definitions of our source files. So what we will have is, um, we will have a, a directory for our common code that's supported in all our platforms. We have uh, a directory for anything that uh, needs to be implemented specifically for the JVM and anything that needs to be implemented for MinGW. Okay? So in this one project, it's quite easy to set up something to work with multiple platforms. Okay? And what I did uh, initially when playing with this was uh, get it to work for native and then I converted it to multi. Uh, platform uh, uh, system, and I was sort of seeing how much code was portable, and it was pretty much all of it. The only thing that I needed to do differently was implement the uh, measuring, because I wanted to measure the runtime, and a string. That was uh, one part of it, and the other part of it was the I/O. So some of the the core or, or the standard uh, Kotlin libraries aren't necessarily available. And one of them being I.O. I suspect that stuff will get a lot better. There are multi-platform libraries that you can make use of that do this, um, but you might want to have more of your code identical uh, and linked to the standard Kotlin code. So you may want to wait on some of these things. Um, what I did for my I.O. Um, was just use um, the POSIX library. So one of the, the things that they have with uh, Kotlin Native is they wanted the interop that you have with the JVM Kotlin to Java, they wanted that same experience for uh, C interop or Objective-C interop or Swift interop so that you could make use of all the code that's already there on the platform. So they have these packages which allow you to do that. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually um, using the POSIX library to open a file and read in some bytes in binary. Okay? Which means then that you know my uh, my reading here is not very simple. Okay, my reading is doing a for loop with a buffer and reading in some of the bytes and then testing how many it actually read and concatenating them all together and, and this sort of stuff, and um, which is quite cumbersome. If I look at job the, the JVM version, it's that line there. So that does the same as all of that other code. You know, so part of the usability of a language and the productivity that you're going to get with a language. Is the library that's supporting it. Um, it's not quite there in Kotlin native yet, but it's still early days and, and it's still together. Okay? But except for the I, okay, and except for that the string, pretty much all the rest of the code was common. And it's the identical code for the native and the JPM, okay? which is pretty impressive. And the compiler 
will keep you right. If you try to use something in the common area, it will say it's not available. So how do you support those multiple platforms? What you do is, in the common area, you uh, define a code that you expect to find. So it's a little bit like interfaces. It's code that you expect to find. And then in the specific platforms, you write the actual implementation. And again, you'll get errors if you try to compile and you haven't put in an actual for and expected. Okay? But it means then that within one project, it's very, very, very easy to support uh, multiple platforms. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, to do interop, we can get pointers. Um, so we can so we get references to the data structures relatively easy. So here I have an array. Um, I can pass it into a pure C function by just calling this ref2. Um, we have things in uh, typically Manus languages where uh, uh, memory could move about and they have some additional uh, functions for handling that as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, because it's beta, there's some stuff that is not getting quite right. So there's some inline functions here which it said would not give a performance boost, but I was seeing quite a large performance boost. So what, what's the performance actually like? So again, this is IntelliJ. They would sort of push you towards uh, C Lion because it's, it's a much better debugging experience. You can't really debug it at all from IntelliJ. But in C Lion, you've got sort of decent debugging capabilities. And then you can interrupt with all your C code as well. Um, but from here, I can you know, build um, and I can run it. Uh, so I've got two here. And I just want to sort of see the performance of some of these things. So what this is doing is, uh, this is going to make sure it's built. Close, and then it's running my console. Um, a 
and you have all the advantages of the, of the library, or of the language. You have all the advantages of the, of the top library compared to the ready something So the, the doc pages, um, we can now move on to the okay? So um, the, the little color, the purple and the orange and stuff, uh, those are the markers for the platforms that the cotton libraries uh, are available for. So you can look through there and see if something supported. The compiler will tell you to try to use something. And they say people have written wrappers around this stuff that are multi-platform. And I suspect that a lot of libraries out there in the cotton community um, if they're not doing anything OS specific, more and more and more will come to the platform. Okay. Um, yep, you've got your IDs and kind of your CLAN, but otherwise, uh, you know, um, these tools are available for clients. You can use uh, anything that you want. So it's not, I would say, run out and use it now for your native development. I would say take a look at it, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, if you're doing mobile development and you've got Android and iOS, certainly it's, it's a really interesting offering. Um, I don't think it's quite there yet. Um, wait until it comes out of beta, maybe if you're a little bit risk averse. But certainly, certainly uh, really, really interesting. So I sort of think in 2019, general momentum around Kotlin, especially in the JVM, is going to grow and grow and grow. And I can sort of see this, uh, this right once you're on anywhere sort of thing. It could actually happen with Kotlin because they've got a good team behind them. Okay, so, yeah. Any questions? Questions? Yep. Do you see this as a migration path from Android to Shift or Android and Android stuff? Sorry? Do you see it as a migration path from Android to Fuchsia? To Fuchsia? Or, yeah, yeah. To bring all the Java developers along? Um, well, I think after everybody, I mean, um, if I was a Java developer, I would be searching the help. There's, there's no doubt. Um, we have in-house, that's, that's what we're doing. Um, the, wide, the wider platforms, there, there's something very attractive about being able to reuse as much code as possible, but I, I don't know if it's, it's quite there yet. Um, but as more and more people adopt it, I can see it.
So, cool. Thank you so much.